Hello, I'm at Super George and I'm so blessed and so glad today to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Hey, we are in the month of March and the Spirit of God has already said He is sending the rain. Praise God. Now when God says things like that, your heart should leap, your heart should be excited. Because when God says he's going to do something, then trust him to do it. What you need to do is to prepare to receive what God has said he's going to do. Praise God. I know we're going to have a great week. But before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Wherever you are at the sound of my voice right now, can you believe God for a miracle today? Praise God. Now listen, miracle is not just for interventions. Miracles can be every day. Now they are called miracles because they are not things the world is used to. See that? But see, God is used to. It's normal. What you call miracle is a normal process with God. So can you believe for a miracle today? I don't know where you are lacking. I don't know where you are really need God to intervene today. But I want to agree with you in faith. As we make this demand together, Jesus said on this broadcast, we should ask for our daily bread every day. And in obedience to his word, join me right now as we make that demand. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen, David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Go study that in Psalm 103 and look at all the benefits. Claim them for yourself. Your daily bread is not just about money. It's about all the benefits that he gives to us daily. For he daily loads us. Not with benefits. With benefits. Praise God. Oh Lord, I just bless you for today's benefits. And Lord, by your spirit, we are guided into them. We receive each one as we need in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, the Lord has said he's sending the rain. And our theme scripture is in Isaiah chapter 32. Isaiah 32 and verse 15. Please take note of this as I share um, these thoughts with you. It says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. In other words, things are going to continue to be bad. Things are going to get worse until something happens. And what is that thing that will happen? The intervention of God in the situation. And how does God intervene in a situation? He pours His Spirit. He pours his spirit. Brothers and sisters, you see, there are certain misconceptions that we have about the spirit of God or, or about the outpouring of the spirit of God. You know, most times as believers, when we talk about the outpouring of the spirit, all we can think about is a shaking, oh, glory, and then the whole place scattering, people falling under the power. So, man, there was an outpouring of the spirit of God. Hey, hey, you know, I pray. See, Paul says, in understanding, be men. See, be men, grow up grow up and growing up one of the attributes of of um, growth it's the ability to analyze things in its perspective the ability to analyze things in the various perspectives and then 
take proper decisions. Now, decisions in understanding, see, because you might be learning and not understanding. When you understand a thing is when you can take decision concerning that thing. So you're learning, you're re you can be reading or someone is teaching you something and then you go, wait, wait, wait. So this means, aha, it means you're following, it means you're understanding. So it's the same thing with the Spirit of God. The same thing with the Word of God. So there are people who just read the Bible and they can quote it verbatim. They can quote it. Oh, John chapter 1 verse 16, blah, 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 this, this, this. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 4, they quote it excellently, but they don't know what he's talking about, praise God. They don't know. Bring it into life application, they can't tell. Ask them a question, rephrase that scripture they just quoted and throw it into life situations. They can't, they can't pull wisdom from that scripture. You know nothing if you're like that. You know nothing. God didn't send us here to be quoting scriptures. And that's why a lot of lives are not changing. And, and lives are not changing because people are not applying their hearts to understanding. It's one thing you must learn to do. Apply your heart to understanding. In all the scriptures you have been reading, all the messages you have been hearing, what have you concluded on? What have you understood that affects your life? You read, you pray. You read, you pray. I mean, reading the Bible now. You read, you pray. You listen to messages, you pray. What have you concluded on in your heart? That have to do with your life sometimes you hear people say things like you know i was praying i was studying and one day something hit me and i said to myself i will never be broke again aha uh -huh. now there is no scripture that they read that says i will never be broke again that they are quoting but what's going on the, in, the, in the reading of the scriptures, there is an understanding that came to them. And based on that understanding, they made that declaration. And it's not a declaration like you think declaration is. It's actually the making up of your mind to reveal the understanding you have gotten. See, brothers and sisters, you need to make decisions for your life. And when I say decisions, now, no, should I go out? Should I go? No, the decision I'm talking about now is declarations. See, decisions that pushes a declaration. And someone says, I will never be sick again. It's not a positive confession. If you're doing it, oh, because someone said it, I'm saying it to sorry you don't get you don't get it it's based on the understand and, and here's the truth the moment you make that declaration thank you lord jesus hi kobarite you know sometimes these things to 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 explain these things in practical forms you know now now someone says I'll never suffer again. Someone says, I'll never be broke again. And he's saying it from the place of conviction. Why is it from the place of conviction? Something has entered his heart. There is something that have transpired. You see that thing that transpired? What is it? It was the spirit of God that was poured on him. Now the moment, see, Things now, now understand something, you know. This this just practically follows the, the, the law of motion, Newton's law of motion. Your life will remain the same until an ex it will remain will still be in the same spot until an external force is applied to it. Now here it says until the spirit of God is poured. See, 
Now, once the Spirit of God is poured out, then there are certain motions that must take place. Certain movements must happen. The Holy Spirit brings forth understanding. The Holy Spirit brings understanding. So when the Spirit of God is poured out, like God said He would do, what you should be expecting is greater level of understanding. What does understanding do to you? It helps you make quality decisions. How do you make quality decisions? I Like I was saying earlier, someone said, I will never beg again. I will never be broke again. Now, why are you saying that? You're saying that because an understanding has come to you. The mind of God has been revealed to you. So when God says, I'll pour out my spirit, don't be looking for the falling. Don't be looking for the shaking. Look for the transformation that will take place in your mind. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What renews your mind? The thoughts, the words that the Holy Spirit brings to you. The understanding that comes to you. You might be that fellow who goes around begging everybody. You might be that fellow who goes around, you know, borrowing from everybody. It's so easy now to borrow from all these loan apps. It's so easy. I mean, they tell you, just ask 100 k and you pay whenever you like. <laughs> it's God. That's the great deception of this age. Because you see, they are aware you, you've got to be serious with your life they are aware that a lot of people especially young people you know there is this drive for more there's this drive to make it so a lot of young people are involved with all the speed lane how to make money fast so hey uh, you can go do betting you can go gambling and, and just hope that when you do it, now, I don't have the money for this. Okay, this guy, see, when the, this is the Bible calls the devil the God of this world system. And here you are, I don't have this money. If I, if I had this money, I'll do it. And then the next day, you receive a message. Oh, you can loan 100K and pay whenever you like. Ah, if I loan the 100K, I'll use it to bet or I'll use it to gamble. And then when I get the money, ah, I will pay back my loan. That is how the deception starts. And then you say, just this one, just this one. And then you do. And you blow the money in a few minutes. It's gone. You want nothing. And the truth is, even if you win, it will not change your life. Because see, the prosperity did not come from the inside. Any prosperity that, did not, that doesn't come from the inside, you will waste it. It will go the same way. See, money money have wings and its nature is to fly the only thing you do for yourself is to give that wings direction but as for money it will always fly you can't stop money from flying the best you can do give it direction to fly now that's what we do with money Give it direction. That's how money obeys you. Money is not supposed to give you direction. You are supposed to give money direction. So lots of young people now in debt. They've not started earning salary. They've not worked yet. But they are in debt already. How did you get into all this debt? Eh, there was something I was working on. What's that you were working on? Find out. Most likely, it's on the speed lane thing. And now, they are looking for them everywhere. They have no rest. They can't come down to reason. They can't think of how to do an honest job. Because as they are thinking of settling down, the devil receives. That's the whole point in the first place. The whole point is to unsettle you. 
Because the devil knows that your calmness of mind creates the environment for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But when you're all about, ah, I don't know, I'm rushing, I'm getting, the Holy Spirit can't speak to you. It's a very calm and gentle spirit. So if you don't learn how to quiet your mind, if you don't learn how to sit in one place for a long time, Try this, sit down at home sometimes. If you're not that kind of a person already, just try, sit down at home doing nothing. Just sit down, don't go anywhere. Add to it, no phone call, just sit down. These are practices you must practice in your life as you grow, sit down. And allow the Holy Spirit to begin to talk to you. You will be amazed the kind of things you will begin to discover around you. There are people who have neighbors. They don't even know the car they drive. Is that bad? You have a neighbor. Your neighbor will pass you on the road. You won't even know this is your neighbor. How men lead their lives. Give yourself a break. Sit down. Observe your environment. You will be amazed the things that God has placed in your environment for your good. But you didn't know. There are people struggling to start businesses. You will be amazed the opportunities that God has placed around where you are. Yeah, now you are, you are, you, you are going, you are paying transport going so far. Say, I want to go and learn something. I want to go and learn something. You don't even know that just behind you, just by the corner there, there's a great opportunity for you. Take time. Walk around your neighborhood. Not, not running. No. Stroll around your neighborhood. Look around. Listen to me. Everything God wants to bless you with is never far away from you. Never. See, because God created you. So you look back and you realize that your life is a long chain of progress that you have made. A long chain of, of success. A long chain. Now, that chain is all connected. You know how chain is? Each one is connected to the other. Calm down and begin from your environment. Even Jesus, when he spoke to the disciples, said they should start in Jerusalem. Where you are, start in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and then Samaria, and then to the uttermost part of the earth. Start from where you are. That's how you live your life. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why am I sharing this with you? The Spirit of God is pouring out. God is pouring out His Spirit. And as His Spirit is being poured out, begin to think how you're going to deploy the Spirit of God, how you're going to deploy this rain that God is talking about. In ideas, flourishing ideas, because your heart has to prosper, your mind has to prosper. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Lots and lots to talk about. Can we just pray? Father, you said you will send the rain. And Lord, our hearts get ready to receive the rain. Thank you for the things you're doing in the lives of everyone listening and watching, to, watching right now. I decree that this week, the manifestation of the rain will be evident in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.